All right, guys, so in today's video, like I told you in the other video that you just watched, hopefully if you didn't, go watch it. But we are creating a problem for ourselves, as you can probably see in the background here. Not necessarily a problem. We need to replace the heater core. This all started because I broke the evaporator core trying to change the receiver dryer. I knew it needed something under the dash, but I didn't want to have to pull it. Yada yada. But today we're going to be replacing the heater core, the air conditioning evaporator core, and all of the blend doors. Now the reason why I didn't film actually removing the dashboard is because truthfully there's a thousand videos out there on how to get this dashboard out of this truck. Now if you've done this before it takes a half an hour to get it to this point legitimately. If you haven't done this before and you're finding bolt by bolt by bolt it's probably going to take you about an hour but I can tell you there are six bolts across the top three bolts down this side three bolts down that side, two in the middle, two under the steering column, and that is literally it. And then the whole dashboard comes out as one modular piece. There are some connectors that you have to disconnect. Even if you've never done this before, nor do you decide to watch a video on it, it'll take you a little bit of time to find everything that needs to be disconnected and they come out. So hit up YouTube for that. But let me take you around the other side of the truck and show you guys what we found thus far. So what we're going to be focused on today is this guy. This is the HVAC module or the air conditioner or the heater or the defroster or the internal external air mover, whatever you want to call it. It does everything with all your heating, ventilation and air conditioning. So basically we've got our evaporator core, which I believe sits in this general vicinity. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Evaporator core sits here, heater core sits over here. We broke the evaporator core and we are also doing all of the blend doors. Now, when I say blend doors, most people are not familiar with these, but if you look down in there, you'll see a couple little doors. There's a door there, a door there. And what those do is when you change your dial, hot or cold or floor, vent, defrost, interior air exterior air uh, air conditioning heat hot cold all that stuff is controlled by these little motors right here these little motors run what are called blend doors well some of them are blend doors these two right here blend your hot air and cold air those over there are mode selection so whether it's defrost floor vents panel vents whatever and then this one here basically selects whether or not you're recirculating the air inside the vehicle or you're getting air from outside of the vehicle on the cowl of the windshield. Now, why we're replacing the blend doors, as hopefully you can see this if I shed some light on it, this is the door that controls outside air. It is literally just flapping in the breeze. So even if we wanted to close it, we couldn't close it. And it's because all of this stuff is plastic as well as these little guys right here that control it those are all plastic and you will see very shortly what we're going to be replacing it with and that is what our main focus is going to be on today is replacing these blend doors so let's get this heater box out of here we'll get it over on the table and we'll start tearing into it Alrighty, and just like that the box is out in case you're curious nut there nut right here bolt right here firewall nut right there another firewall nut right there so you have two underneath the firewall that you need to get to on the other side on the engine bay side and then three on the interior and literally it just pops right out so and luckily it only weighs about 10 pounds or so it's really not that heavy and uh yeah that's what you're looking at so this would be the firewall side we decided to take it apart with the uh the hoses on the heater core because they didn't want to come off but um yeah so pretty simple now we're going to tear this entire box apart and replace the guts all right guys so we've come to the part in the video where i lower my chair won't go anymore where we actually explain what it is that we're going to be doing with this thing so in our particular heater box there are five distinct doors 
Each door has a purpose. You have your inside outside air door, you have your two hot cold blend doors, you have your mode one door and your mode two door, potentially whatever. Now with Blend Door USA, and we'll show you guys these more close up when, uh, when we actually get to the point where we're installing them, but these are all billet aluminum. There's not a weld, a seam, nothing. All billet aluminum. And this is important for a multitude of reasons. And again, we'll get into more about that when we start installing them and why they're better than the actual plastic doors that are in the machine and why the aluminum is not gonna cause an issue with weight and yada, yada, yada. But I wanted to bring you guys' attention to this company. This company is called Blendor USA. And we'll leave all the information down in the description. Blendor USA is a US company based out of Michigan. The owner's name is Jim. I spoke to him on the phone for over two hours. He's an amazing human being with an amazing product. And guys, you know me, I like to go American made whenever I can. And this stuff is truly 100% sourced American materials, American craftsmanship, CNC machining in the United States, and everything about it is just incredible. So a little bit of backstory on the company that makes these. They are one of the companies who supplied the big three, and you know them as Chevrolet, Chrysler, and Ford with a lot of the parts throughout the years that have made their vehicles what they are, especially with the Chrysler vehicles, with Jeeps and everything else. Now, at some point in time, the need for that kind of dwindled and the owner of Blendor USA decided to market his products to the general public because there was a need for them. There is always a need for them. And as you guys saw, I have a broken door in my box. That doesn't sound good, but we'll roll with it. So having a replacement scenario is perfect. Now there are other replacements out there. There's a company called Dorman, which many of you may be familiarized with that sell plastic replacements. And there's another company called Heater Treater that sells replacements that are of the steampunk era. Um, very interesting to say the least. If you want to look them up on your own, look them up on your own, but uh, we're not going to focus on them because we're focused on Blendor USA. Now, I called to speak to the owner because I wanted to know what his deal was. I wanted to know what these products were all about and, you know, if the price you pay for these was worth it, which, by the way, is not much more expensive than buying the Dorman blend doors. So, cost-wise, these things are amazing. Now, full disclosure, he did send me both of these kits to utilize in the truck and to make a video off of, but you guys know me. If there's a product that I don't like, you'll probably never see it. The owner of that product is probably going to be pissed off because they'll never see it either and it'll end up in the trash. But this is a totally different story here. This set of blend doors right here covers everything from 2002 to 2009 Ram 1500, 2500, 3500. It also covers the mega cab trucks with the extra rear door for the rear stuff. It also covers your dual zone trucks, both single cab, extended cab, mega cab. It covers all of the scenarios of heater box that you could potentially have in your 02 to 09 Ram. And it replaces everything. You get all of the actuators, you get all of the, the arms that you need, you get all of the levers that you need, you get everything that you're going to need to replace all these blend doors and guys, if you go on their website, it's 320 bucks for the kit that you will never have to replace again. And believe me, if you're already tearing into your heater box to do, let's say a, a heater core or an evaporator core or something, spend the 300 bucks, get a set of these and put them in and you will not regret it. Now, a little side note, this is Dodge only, right? This is for the Dodge Ram. They also make kits for the Grand Cherokee, which another vehicle that is synonymous for breaking blend doors. They also make them for the Dodge Durango. They're not quite out yet. They will be out very soon. So he is going to be the only manufacturer in the world that makes Dodge Durango replacement blend doors. All right, guys. So I just wanted to kind of interject here in the middle of this real quick. And uh, 
kind of let you guys know what was available on the website here. Well, number one is a coupon code. Get 5% off your order. Sign up for the newsletter. Get 5% off your order, 250 or more. But from the time that I spoke with the owner to the time that I actually got this stuff and installed it, he did release um, some new stuff, which is awesome. So what we have for availability right now, as you can see here, is the 4th Gen 09 Plus RAM. And he does have complete kits for the repair of those. He's also got the 3rd Gen, which is what we're showing in this video here. And again, the 3rd Gen kits cover everything from 02 to 09, including the dual zone, single zone, uh, mega cab with the rear blend, all that other interesting stuff here's one second gen nobody in the world produces these kits right now but he does and they're back in stock last time i checked they were out of stock so he's got them back in stock now and ready to ship so you guys that are restoring these second gens man jump all over these things and then the 98 to 08 dodge durango which is what i had said previously wasn't available yet is now available on the site this is for the rear HVAC repair, and I do believe that when I spoke with Jim, he said he was going to be doing more on the Durango front, so stay tuned for that. And then, of course, your 99-04 Grand Cherokee, uh, WJ with the dual zone, um, or single zone, or electronic, or whatever. It's, it's, this covers everything, so you're good there. So just kind of wanted to interject real quick. Show you guys what the website looks like. He's got full-blown installation instructions. There's a gentleman that did some really awesome installation videos on this, and I suggest that you check those out. And uh, they're on the third gen. But the kits do all come with installation instructions for all of the kits that are available. So um, there are just several things. So if you want, hit up Blendor USA. Like I said, I'll leave the link in the description. And you guys go check the website out for yourself. See if he's got what you need, and uh, if he does, place an order. Both him and I would greatly appreciate it. All right, so now let's get back to the video. So guys, I'm going to put the link in the description. If you want to, I would highly suggest, even before this video is over, go check out Blendor USA. See if they have an application for you. I know he's coming out with more stuff that... He wanted me to talk about or wanted me to touch upon Chevrolet's coming. Uh, the Dodge Durango stuff is coming. We've already got second, third, and fourth gen Dodge stuff on the, on the, the site already. There's already Grand Cherokee stuff up there. So this is going to be huge. This is absolutely going to be huge. Now, we're going to take all of this stuff and put it aside for now. We're going to start getting into the box, and we're going to replace these one by one so that we can actually show you the process of replacing all these blend doors and why it's super important that if you're going to have this heater box out of the truck you might as well go ahead and do these so let me move all these aside and we'll get the heater box all right guys so the first thing we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to tackle the main inlet this is the main air inlet for your heater box so the air comes in through here from the outside and then down into your fan and blows throughout the box now, with this door being broken, and I'm sure you guys can see that from that side, with this door being broken, we have no control over whether or not the air comes in from outside or not, which in the wintertime or the heavy summertime sucks because if this thing is open and it's allowing exterior air to blow in through there, you're getting hot air, cold air, whatever it may be. So we need to get this off of here. Now, to get this whole section apart, there are two screws on the front here. There's a couple of tabs on the back, a couple of plastic tabs, and then this whole unit will actually lift right up off of here. So we're going to start by taking this actuator off the side. And they're just Phillips head screws. Everything comes off pretty easy. And the nice thing too is Chrysler went ahead and actually marked recirc. And then there's other markings for the thermal, the thermal couples and a few other odds and ends. So we're just going to pull this out to get it out from there. And then we're going to take this whole section off and we're going to work on that specifically. All right, so we got that done. Now we got these two tabs that we have to release back here. 
and be super careful not to bend those too far because you will snap them. And then this whole assembly comes right off with the door in it. So we're gonna move the box out of the way for now. All right, so now we can focus on this piece right here. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is this unit that's in the bottom right here. This just pulls right out. And that'll give us the room we need to get this blend door out of here. Second thing we have to do is remove this little white drive pin right here, which you can see just spins and spins and spins. So you're gonna need a pair of pliers or something to get that out of there because it is snapped in there pretty tight. So let's do that. Get this out of here. Oh my God. Nine times out of 10, you'll break these things when they come out. We got lucky with this one, it didn't break, but we don't need it anyway. So then you can see the door just falls out. Now here's the problem. <laughs> that is not supposed to spin like that. That is literally supposed to operate this door, but it doesn't because all of the plastic inside has stripped out. And surprisingly, this thing didn't crack. They usually crack. So now that we have this thing apart, let's show you the differences. Okay, so here's our plastic door. This is our factory door. Now, the problem that you're always gonna run into with these doors is that they are plastic and from heat cycling and everything else, they get very brittle. Now, another problem too is this foam. If you've ever turned on your heater system and you've seen foam come out of it, that's the foam that's coming out of it. Now, when that foam deteriorates, your obvious seal goes away just completely disintegrates. And that makes for either a whistly, noisy air box or just air leaks that you don't want and things of that nature. On the Blendor USA door, it is a nice open cell foam that is synthetic and will never break apart like this foam breaks apart. So that's one thing you don't have to worry about and the foam covers the entire thing. So not only does this foam cover and seal better, but it will also quiet down the flow of air because now instead of just the, the edges having the foam on it, it's got foam over the entire thing, which will keep things a little bit quieter. Now onto the second best thing. This is plastic, that's plastic. Put plastic together, no bueno. On these, I'll be able to show you these are all billet aluminum machined parts. This one is notched or keyed, so it can only fit in here one way. And once it's in there, it's in there. It's not gonna break. And the benefit of that, and having that strength and these being billet, oh God, this foam is making a mess. But what we're gonna get into right now is a little bit of the reasoning behind why things happen and why these doors break. So why do these doors break? Well, this is the actuator for the door. This is a factory one. Now these are what are called a gear reduction motor. And there's a little tiny brain inside of this thing. And the little tiny brain that's inside of it, when it's hooked up to the blend door, will move the blend door when you turn the knob move it in whatever direction you tell it to move it. Now the way that these operate is this door, when it goes to its limit, the door stops. The motor continues to push on that door. It then senses the current overdrive or the overloading current or the increase in current that the motor is seeing because now the door has stopped and it says, oop, better stop. Now the problem with that is that these motors can produce quite a bit of torque because you're talking a gear reduction of probably a hundred to one. So if this motor is producing an inch pound of torque, the output is producing a hundred inch pounds of torque. And if you take a hundred inch pounds of torque and you put it up against some plastic, you're going to break the plastic every single time. Now this thing, when it goes from limit to limit, it does that every single time. So each and every time that this motor goes to a limit, it runs it until it stops, it pushes a little harder, it senses the current over, and then it moves back just a hair without having to go into overcurrent mode. These run solely on overcurrent mode. So your door is constantly slamming shut. Well, not slamming, but 
shutting, pushing harder, and then shutting down. So it's a lot of stress on plastic parts, especially when they're, you know, 10, 12, 13 year old, 14 year old parts. They just don't last and they end up stripping out. So these doors are absolutely needed when it comes to this stuff. If you replace these things with plastic doors, you're just gonna have a problem. So now, all we have to do is take our box that we took the other door out of, and we're going to assemble it the same way that the other one came apart. So we'll stick the door in there, run it down in there. We will take our piece, run it through the side here, and then we'll get it into the keyed position. And there we go. So now we have our nice blend door installed or our recirc door installed. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our actuator back on. And the nice thing about the way that they set these things up is that we do not need to do any specific timing on this. We can put this actuator in however we want to because ultimately there's a Harley Davidson outside and it always messes up my videos. But ultimately, it doesn't matter how you put it in because as soon as this thing cycles, it's gonna find its limit and it'll stop. So we'll put our two small screws back in. And there we go. That is literally all there is to it. So now we have our new blend door in. And now we can go ahead and just stuff this piece back in. And we can put that back on our heater box after we replace this weather stripping, which is doing the same thing. Absolutely disgusting. So we're going to put this one aside and we're going to grab the heater box and we're going to do the rest of the blend doors. All right, guys. So the next step is going to be our what they call mode one door. This door here moves 45 degrees in either direction when it's completely up. It diverts all air over to mode two, which mode two handles your floor and your defrost. This handles your panel vents con completely. When the doors are down, it actually pushes all of your air up through the panel vents. So we are going to pull this whole mechanism off. We're gonna start by taking off the actuator. Then we're gonna remove this top panel. Then we can remove the internals and get the door out. And this one, same thing, has two little plastic tabs on the back that you want to be really careful with. You don't want to break those suckers. You pull this top piece off. Then we have three more screws. We got two right here and one here that we got to pull. And once we get those out, we can get this whole assembly out which houses our mode one door. And there it is. And so same thing, we have to pull this piece out, which I'm gonna try not to send it across the table again, because that's always fun and breaking it. There we go. All right, so we got that one out. Now we can pull the door out. And you can see that there are two tiny little tabs in there that interface with that. Now, it doesn't take much. I mean, you can literally, with a little bit of torque, you can snap that thing right off of there. This one was still good, but we're going to replace it anyway. All right, just for comparison, there's our new one. Absolutely amazing compared to this one. So we're just going to do the exact reverse of what we just did. And that'll take care of our mode one door. Get this tape off of here, just so we don't have any binding or any weirdness. Make sure everything fits. We'll slide our door in place. 
slide in our cam. And there we go. Now we can just flip this over. We can put it back in place. Before we go too, too far, we're going to pop all the screws in. We're going to make sure we have free movement of this door, which we do. So now that we know we have free movement of that door, we can put our actuator back on. Again, doesn't really matter what position it ends up in. Pop our two screws back in. And then we can pop our top piece back on. And that takes care of the mode one door. So now we have our recirculation door set and we have our mode one door set. Now we're gonna flip the box over and we're gonna move on to our actual hot cold blend doors. And we're going to move on to our mode two door. So we need to flip this thing over and tear it apart. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it on its back technically and move this gasket a little bit to see if we have any screws and we do so when i took this thing out of the truck i left the hoses on it because uh they weren't coming off so let's take a second and get those off all right so we got the hoses off of the heater core now there's two screws and a little retaining bracket and this is probably the easiest part of the whole job Pull two screws, get rid of the little retaining bracket, and then the heater core literally just lifts right out of the box. There we go. And our core actually looks good. It wasn't leaking, which is amazing because these usually leak at these connections right here because they rotate and they're O-ringed. So they do tend to leak once in a while. But this one is actually good. So we'll keep it around in case our new one fails, but we want to put a new one in anyway. And now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the box over. Any of the electrical connections that we're going to find, which you'll see in a second. Wait, well, sounds like we got some stuff roaming around in that box. Any of the electrical connections, we're just going to pull anything that is between the top and bottom of the heater box itself it needs to come off so these little areas where the connectors are this is the temp sensor I'm just going to pull these down so that we can now take out what's roughly 15 screws to get the bottom half of this box apart because that'll get us access to our mode one door. That'll get us access to our evaporator core. And we will be pretty close and also giving us access to our, our blend doors for the hot and cold. So let's get all these screws out. There we go. Good Lord. All right, now we can separate the top and the bottom. After we get the wires disconnected from it, like I said earlier, and this actuator. And for right now, we can set this aside. I think we found what was going on. And we're going to start by replacing one of our blend doors. So this door has an actuator 
also has this door and it's got a rod that connects to a secondary door. Now when these doors move back and forth, that gives you your hot and cold blend. That's why it's called a blend door. So we're going to pull this door out and actually we're going to get our evaporator core out of the way. Wow, look at that. We found part of the blower resistor, an old one, because that's a new one. We found 11 cents, some more foam. How do we dump this out? That's pretty gross. All right, so now we're going to take off this actuator. Keep in mind that this does have an arm on it that will go to a rod that will run the other blend door for the cold section. Take off the actuator. We're going to pull this whole assembly out and then we'll replace this particular door. All right, same thing as before, we need to pop that out, but we also need to pop out a dummy one that's on the other side that just holds this door in. So I think what we're gonna do in order to do that is we're gonna take this out of the box completely, which there's two tabs on the front section here by me, and one tab in the rear, and then that whole thing lifts out, and now we can struggle with pulling these stupid things out again. All right, I'm gonna do this off camera. Alrighty, so we got these both out. This one was the one that was on this side, and it was facing that way towards my right, probably your left, and then the dummy one that goes at the back. So now we can get rid of this door. All right, so now we can put in our replacement door, which has a larger end on this side to make up for that dummy plug. And we'll just slide that right in there like we did with all our other stuff. And then this is the arm it has the, the provision for the rod that controls the other arm. We'll get that in there. And then we're going to snap this right back down in place again. And again, we want to make sure before we put the actuator on that our door moves freely. And it does. So we're good there. We can stick our actuator back on. Alright, now that our actuator is back on that side, we can take this side of the box, move it aside, and move on to the other half, get the other two doors done. Alright, so here's the other half of the box. Now this one, again, has a dummy plug on one end, and has a rod that faces that way on this side or a, an arm basically this side of the box is the same thing you got two tabs on this side and one tab on this side the whole unit comes out and in it we find what was rattling around which is one of our vent louvers it's always funny the stuff that you fit in here and again I am going to do this off of camera and get these out because I struggle and I swear a lot and I don't want to do that on camera. So on this one, this is the other end of the door that is controlled by this control rod right here. And what we're going to do again is we're going to install it with the dummy end on this side. And then the difference with this one is because it's not driven by a motor, it actually has this particular rod along with a screw cap head screw that will then locate this perfectly and the way that he's got this thing set up is it's off-centered so no matter how you install this thing it's going to be correct which is perfect So everything is keyed, everything is done correctly. All right, just threw a little bit of Loctite on that sucker, but now you can see that that moves 
as it's supposed to. So now we can drop this one back down in. Our rod faces where it needs to face. And we do have a little bit of adjustability here before we crank this thing down completely. And we're going to want to make sure that we adjust this thing properly so that our doors seal as we want them to. So now we can drop our setup back in. Making sure again that everything moves freely. And it does. And you'd be surprised at how tweaked and warped these boxes can get, especially if they've been hacked on once or twice. Yeah, everything moves good. So now we're going to move on to our last one, which is this door. And this is the door that controls your feet or your uh, defrost. So in that position, it is full defrost. In that position, it is full foot heat. So we're going to pull that one out. We're going to probably jab ourselves in the stomach with this damn thing. But we'll try not to kill ourselves. Because uh, I don't feel like doing that today. Oh, God. I hate those things. All right. We can pull that door out. And then we can take our beautiful replacement. And put it in place. Pop our cam in place. And guys, that is it for the blend doors. So now all we got to do is put our new evaporator core in, put everything back together, and we'll be golden. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and get all this stuff situated. And as this thing goes back together, we'll show you how to put the rods together. Make sure everything's adjusted properly and go from there. All right, guys. So with this little mechanism right here, all you're really wanting to do is make sure that both of these are traveling at their fullest spec and that this one is hitting its stop and that one is hitting its stop because you do have a little bit of movement in this. So what I did was I shut this one all the way, shut that one all the way, pushed on them a little bit to make sure that they were under a little bit of tension, tighten this one up. And now they are in sync and good to go. Not Backstreet Boys. But now we're just going to go ahead and replace all of the rest of the crap on this box. We're going to go get some weather stripping tomorrow and we'll be good. Alright guys, so there you have it. Our recirc door is in. Evaporator core is in. Heater core is in. Nice and easy to put in down there. We got our actual hot cold blend doors are in this section right here. Our mode one door here, mode two door here, and everything is hunky dory. We put all the wiring back where it needs to be, and uh, we got everything adjusted. We got everything set. We got our temperature sensor in. Everything is good to go. So, overall, not a bad project. Of course, it takes me twice as long because I'm filming it, but not too bad. So, let's talk about it for a sec. All right, so I went ahead and lined up the factory door with the corresponding Blendor USA door. Now these are the, the dual zone setups because we have our single zone box, which we put in. So we didn't use these because these are again, dual zone. And you also have all of the hardware related to the dual zone setup. And what's awesome is it's all labeled blue, red, yellow, then if you look at the other side of these, blue, yellow, so you know exactly where to put the stuff. Red. It's just one of the, the nice little touches that, that Jim and his company put on these things is, you know, as a do-it-yourselfer, this is not an impossible project. You know, I may, may, may have made this look more difficult than it truly is, but if you can wield a screwdriver and a wrench, you're not going to have a problem with this. Um... Take your time, do what you got to do. But I wanted to bring your attention to something. So like I was talking about the foam on this here, it's a very special type of foam. It's very expensive and it's not available to the public, but he buys so much of it and utilizes it that, you know, and never have a problem. And this stuff is stuck on there. I mean, it's, I don't want to tear these apart and ruin them because these are nice pieces. But if you look at the foam on the factory ones, now these are the doors for 
the hot cold blend. And you can see the hot and cold actually does quite a bit of damage to the foam, but it just comes apart. So now these doors don't seal, they whistle. You don't get proper cooling, proper heating. Same thing goes for the upper door. The foam's just coming off of it. This is the defrost slash foot door. And you can see because it's not, you know, in as much use and doesn't see as much heat, the foam isn't as bad. It's still kind of holding in one piece. Then of course you have your recirc door with no foam on it. Cause that sees all the outside air, the engine air, all kinds of crappy stuff. So that one shot. We're making a mess on the table again. I literally just cleaned the table and now it's a disaster again. And then of course you have your mode two door. Oh no, I'm sorry, your mode one door. This is the door that controls the air that goes to your vents on your dash. You can see the differences. Now, I'm going to answer a couple of quick questions. And then we're going to end this video. And we're going to move on to reinstalling everything back in the truck. All right, so the questions that I know is going to be the number one question. Are the aluminum doors heavier than the plastic doors? And are the motors going to be able to move these doors? Well, the answer is yes. And the answer is yes to the second part of the question. Those motors produce enough torque to break this plastic, which means they produce more than enough torque to move these aluminum doors. However, here's a little caveat. If you have aftermarket servo motors for your doors, they're going to strip out. The aftermarket ones are garbage. You are better off going straight to the dealer, paying a little bit of extra money, getting a blend door actuator that is from the factory because they have different styles of gears, they have much better plastics, and they will not strip out because you have to remember, when these doors close, they hit up against it and then they push a little bit and then stop. With the plastic, they will flex just a hair because it's plastic. With these guys, no flex. I mean, look at this, watch. Nothing, didn't flex at all. Billet aluminum, never gonna break. Absolutely insane. So yes, you need factory actuators and aftermarket actuators only gonna last so long, even with the plastic doors. Never mind putting a door on it that doesn't flex at all. So you have to make sure that you have a motor that can handle that over torque and shut off like it's supposed to without stripping all the gears out. So make sure you have factory actuators on your heater box. Otherwise you are gonna have problems down the road. Now, as far as the weight goes, the weight doesn't matter. Those motors could actually turn probably half of this truck if it really wanted to with the gear reduction it's got. So there is no concern with the weight of these things being an issue with the motors moving it. The only issue of concern is the fact that they do not flex and you need a motor that is strong enough to reach that overcurrent situation. Two, pricing. I don't know what the Dorman stuff costs. I don't know what the heater treater stuff costs. All I know is that I've seen both of those products. I've installed both of those products. I don't like any of them. Dorman has the kit where you cut the bottom of the heater box open. I think heater treater does it too. You slice the bottom of the box open, you pull out the bad door, you put in a new door, and then you tape the bottom of the box closed. Well, here's, a, here's an interesting one for you guys. The bottom half of that box is $350 from the dealer. Top half of the box, $350 from the dealer. If you start cutting into that thing, you're making a $700 mistake. Take the hour, pull the dash, pull the box out, and do it right. Put Blendor USA stuff in there because... Uh, why wouldn't you? Billet aluminum, made in USA, incredible foam, incredible craftsmanship, incredible dedication. Again, I spoke with the owner for over two hours. The owner of the company is amazing. He's a great guy, great guy to talk to, very passionate about his product, and uh, I stand behind it 100%. So, with that being said, go down in the description Go to the website, blendorusa.com, check them out, find your application, order the parts, tell them I sent you. They do offer military discount. He also does offer law enforcement discount, first responder discount. So go on the website. There's a section there. Company does offer a military discount, first responder discount. 
which is amazing in my eyes. Or if you don't see what you're looking for, give them a call. Order it on the website. Tell them that you're military. Tell them that you're first responder, and you'll get a discount for it. So with that being said, I'm going to go home and go to bed because it's now like 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, it was finally cool enough to do some work. It's been so... I'm not going to say it because you guys know I've been complaining about it. But yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the description. I will answer everything that I need to answer about these blend doors. These things are absolutely incredible. And uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Have a great night.